All right, guys, uh, this is Nathan Sander. We're here at the Zorgfleet Cemetery. And uh, it was um, founded in 1870. And it started out as a retreat, actually. And for some reason, they decided to turn it into a cemetery. It's the ultimate retreat now. The, the, ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate retreat. And as they say themselves here at the Zorgfleet, it is, a, it is a moment of meditation in an otherwise hectic city. Well, I don't know if Amsterdam is that hectic. It's pretty hectic. It's pretty hectic. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find some meditation. So Nate and I are going to check out some of the graves and do a little tour around the, the graveyard. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Let's go. So the uh, cemetery soon became a cemetery for the elite, but uh, I don't think, Nate, that there are any requirements. I think the only requirement is for you to, to, to be dead. <laughs> to be allowed here on the cemetery but it is popular with uh, famous people here uh, in Amsterdam famous Amsterdamers and what you can actually do you can go to the uh, the Zorgfleet website zorgfleetonline.nl and download one of these maps which is exactly what uh, Nate and I have done and the cemetery is you can't really see it but it is divided into 25 sections and they each have their own specific character and atmosphere and one of the requirements for the gravestones for example is that they have to match the atmosphere of the section this is uh, clearly the, the, uh, the grave of someone creative. Who is, who is this? This is the grave of uh, Annie M.G. Schmidt. And she is also called the, uh, the Queen of Dutch Children's, children's Literature. Oh, cool. All right. <laughs> like uh, the Dr. Seuss of the, uh, of the Dutch? Yeah, yeah I, I suppose so. Well, what, what surprises me immediately is that her grave is not very much in character with the rest of the graves. No, so it is not. This is a clear violation of uh, cemetery rules here. I think when you're uh, a creative like this, maybe you are as beloved as she, as she was, maybe you get a little bit more credence. Ah, uh, I guess so. All right, Nate. This is, uh, this is the grave of Hildo Krop. So, hier ligt begraven, in Dutch, uh, here lies buried, mm -hmm. Hildo Krop, Stadsbeeldhouwer van Amsterdam, uh, meaning city sculptor of Amsterdam. And he passed away in 1970, born in 1884, and this is the guy who is responsible. And if you, if you look at, at this gravestone here, you may recognize it. This is the guy responsible for most of the ornaments and sculptures that you find on the bridges in Amsterdam. Like sculptures of, I don't know, uh, crocodiles or, or eagles, and they're all usually on the corners of the bridges. Because of him and all these small details, it yeah. makes the city more beautiful and for us to enjoy. And in that sense, I find him a visionary. So Nate, have you ever heard of the TV program The Wereld Draait Door? I have not, but I'm guessing it has something to do with uh, this gentleman here. Well, I, I, in, a, in a way it does. So this guy is called Martin Brill. All right. And he was a well-known columnist and writer. But Martin Brill is most famous for, uh, let's say, adding a word to the Dutch dictionary. Now, Dutch is a language that keeps evolving and then people <laughs> find a new word and may end up in the dictionary. And he invented a word that everybody knows by now, and it's called Rokjesdag. What is this? Rokjesdag. I'm a little, I'm yeah. little hesitant. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it literally <laughs> means uh, scourge day. Skirts day, uh -huh. and it is the day uh, on which all women, magically independent of each other, decide ah, that it's the yeah. perfect weather to wear uh, a skirt. Sure, sure. The first day of spring when it actually gets warm and it's nice yeah. out. Yeah, and that is Rokjesdag. <laughs> That's so awesome. When you know it's Rokjesdag, <laughs> it's uh, it's really springtime. Right, right. Martin Brill, we I salute you, Brill. sir. Yeah. So near Martin Brill, you can also find the grave of a famous Dutch painter and. Uh, He's actually very famous, yet not many people know him. And his name is Karel Willink. Okay. Karel Willink, born 1900 here in Amsterdam, died in 1983. And this guy first wanted to become an architect, but then decided to be a painter instead. And his style is what they commonly refer to as magic realism. Well, we're looking for the grave of uh, Wubbel Ockels, and if you don't pay attention, you, you may as well actually pass it. Right? You will walk right by it, yeah. This guy, when you look at his grave, you wouldn't think he is a famous Dutch person. Right. Uh, he definitely has a strange name. He's got the greatest Dutch name I've ever heard Wobbo my entire life. and Ockels. Wobbo Ockels is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you, if, you, if you look at, at this, well, what is it? This little... I it's a know, plaque. A little plaque. A plaque yeah. If you look at it, what do you think he, uh, his fascination was? I would think his fascination would be space. Most definitely. Right, right yeah. yeah. So he was the first Dutch astronaut. Okay. A, he was actually a physicist but also an astronaut with the European uh, Space Agency. Mm -hmm. And in 1985, he was the first Dutch citizen to actually uh, go into space. The Zorgvliet Cemetery is located on the Amstelduik, just a little bit below Martin Luther King Park. And I think both me and Nate can say it is a great place to find some peace and quiet in an otherwise potentially hectic city. The cemetery is open daily until 5 p.m. and from April to October actually to 8 p.m. 
So go check it out yourselves. I'm Sander Outkerk for Sodem Local.